Hello and welcome to Sips and Stories. My name is Elizabeth and in today's video I will be discussing all of the classic books that I plan to read this summer. These are books that I have been saving up to specifically read in the summer because they're a little lighter in tone. A lot of them are about strong female characters. Some of them are romances. Some of them are comedies. I have a little fantasy mixed in. And a lot of them are set in exotic locations. So perfect for some armchair traveling this summer. Grab your favorite beverage and join me as I discuss all of the classic books that I plan to read this summer. Alrighty, let's begin with a few Penguin Cloth Bound classics that I have. This one, The Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Toole is perhaps my favorite Penguin Cloth Bound classic, especially that cover with the hot dogs. I just love this, not sure you can see it, but one of my favorite Penguin Cloth Bounds. It has yellow end papers and then a yellow ribbon bookmark. I love this book so much. Confederacy of Dunces has been on my TBR for a long time. It's supposed to be a very humorous novel about a buffoon, this big chubby guy named Ignatius J. Riley. He lives with his mother in New Orleans and in this book he does a series of odd jobs including working at a hot dog stand. So again it's supposed to be one of the most comedic novels ever written. Everyone loves this book. I think the reason I haven't read it before is I am a little spooked about the origins of this book. The author, John Kennedy Toole, killed himself, committed suicide, and the story goes that his mother found this manuscript in his room amongst his papers. She thought it was wonderful and she really fought and pushed to have this story published. And it has been a success, a posthumous success, you could say. It won the Pulitzer Prize, and it's just kind of loosely based on John Kennedy Toole's life. So it is a little bittersweet that this book has since become so famous after he passed away, and he never got to enjoy that success. Uh, but that being said, I'm really looking forward to it. I know it's sad, the author's life was sad, but the book is supposed to be hilarious, and I do love a good comedy. Another Penguin Cloth Bound classic I am looking forward to reading this summer is Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. And I have never read any Elizabeth Gaskell before other than a few short stories, but I really just want to read one of her books this year. And Wives and Daughters is really long and North and South is really long. So I thought I would try Cranford. Also, I've just been really wanting to read just a sweet Victorian novel of country village life and I didn't want to wait for Victober. I think I'll save like Thomas Hardy and George Eliot for Victober. And I think Cranford does sound, although it's Victorian, like a perfect novel to read in the summertime. It is about these two spinsterish sisters. Um, I think Miss Maddie and Miss Deborah. And it's about all the gossip, the village gossip in their town of Cranford and just all the people in Cranford and everyone's like, business and their love lives and their families and the scandals. It sounds really good. The miniseries starring Dame Judi Dench also looks really good. So I'm hoping that I will enjoy this so I can go back and watch that miniseries. And then again, I did mention in my spring TBR that I had read Lark Rise to Candleford. I just finished Lark Rise to Candleford. I love that book so much by Flora Thompson and that one was also just a charming story of English country village life. And in fact, in Lark Rise to Candleford, Laura and her uncle Tom, they bond over reading Cranford together. So I thought just all the stars were aligning for me to read Cranford once and for all this year. Okay, now let's move on to my folios. And of course, I will show you some close up shots. I always love displaying my folios. This one is To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. I love Virginia Woolf. I've had this book on my shelf for years and I have not gotten around to it. I've always wanted to read To the Lighthouse in the summertime. I mean, doesn't it sound like a summertime read? but every summer rolls by, I think about it, then I forget about it, and you just can't read to the lighthouse in the dead of winter in January. But that being said, Virginia Woolf 
you kind of have to be in the right mood for Virginia Woolf, right? Like this book is only 200 pages long, but because it's Virginia Woolf, it's gonna feel like a thousand pages long because she is so dense and her writing is so weird and it just kind of goes all over the place, that whole stream of consciousness writing that she does. Again, I have to be in the specific mood to enjoy Virginia Woolf and I think I'm ready for it. I think, you know, I'm gonna be getting to this book sooner rather than later. Um, one way that I find the best way to read Virginia Woolf is just to dive right in. Just let it wash over you, her language. And then you find after like you get into the rhythm of her language, then you start getting into the book. I'll do my best with this one. What is it about? It is about the Ramsey family, I believe, and they go on vacation to the Isle of Skye and they visit a lighthouse. That's all I know about this book, but again, I am really looking forward to reading this one this summer. Another folio that I'm a little more excited to read is The Towers of Trebizond by Rose McClay. And I bought this book on eBay just based on that cover. I loved that cover with the woman with the short hair, with her camel out there in the desert, right? Like you could tell like a person like me would like this book. Um, but yeah, I have since read Rose McClay's book, Dangerous Ages. In fact, in 2022, it was one of my favorite books of the year. I highly recommend Dangerous Ages. And now that I know that she wrote this book, I'm that much more excited to read it. Rose McClay published this later in life at the age of 75. That alone is also really fascinating and makes me want to read this book. What is it about? It is about this woman named Lori who is on vacation with her aunt Dot and several other British travelers and they're traveling through Turkey. Trebizond is modern day Turkey. So it starts off in Istanbul and then they have like this series of adventures with all of the local characters. I also have heard that Billy Graham makes an appearance in this book and that makes me want to read it as well because I love Billy Graham. But that just kind of speaks to one of the themes of the book. It's this like East meets West culture. Now that she's been exposed to the Middle Eastern culture, she really likes some of their values and traditions and she's questioning her own faith in this book. So I think there's a lot of like discussion of religion and politics and things like that. In fact, the opening sentence just caught me right away. Take my camel, dear, said my Aunt Dot as she climbed down from this animal on her return from high mass. And there is a picture of Aunt Dot and Lori with the camel. So again, I am really excited about this one and I cannot wait to read it this summer. Speaking of authors that I love, um, the next book that I'd like to read this summer is also kind of a travelogue book and that is The Lost Horizon by James Hinton. I read James Hinton's most famous book, Goodbye Mr. Chips, also a couple years ago. Again, it was in that 2022 favorites video of mine. And I love Goodbye Mr. Chips. It's just very tongue in cheek, but cozy and heartwarming. If you have not read Goodbye Mr. Chips, you just have to. It's just one of my favorite books of all time. It is about a teacher that teaches at a boys boarding school in England. This one is shifting gears a little bit. This is set during World War II and this plane full of travelers crash lands in the Himalayas and they are rescued by these Tibetan llamas and they are taken to Shangri-La and it is this utopian society where everyone lives for a hundred years or hundreds of years and everyone is very kind and compassionate and loving and it just sounds really really good. I've been saving this one. Do you ever save books? You just you want to read it but then you want to save it at the same time for the right moment but I think this summer will be the perfect time to read The Lost Horizon. Another classic book that I'd like to read this summer is Frenchman's Creek by Daphne du Maurier. And before I begin, can I just give a shout out to this adorable vintage cover? I found this at a thrift store and I just had to have it. I love that cover so much. I just love the back too. And it reminds me of those old like Walt Disney movies that are set in the 1960s. Again, I love Daphne du Maurier. Of course, Rebecca is one of my all time favorite books. And I have read My Cousin Rachel. I've read Jamaica Inn. And you can never go wrong with Daphne du Maurier. Her books are usually very moody, very atmospheric, lush descriptions, and also very romantic. 
This one is very interesting. It sounds cool. It's about this woman who is an aristocrat and she lives in London most of the time. She's married and she has children, but she decides to spend the summer at her country estate in Cornwall by the sea. And she finds that there is a pirate that has been camping out at her house and has been living at her house and they fall in love apparently. So she falls for this pirate. Again, it sounds a little kooky. It sounds a little weird, but because it's Daphne du Maurier that wrote this, I'm really excited about Frenchman's Creek and I can't wait to get around to this one this summer. All right, next I would like to read something by Willa Cather. So I'm gonna ask any viewers out there to recommend, do you recommend O Pioneers or My Aunt Antonia? I think I'll probably go with My Antonia because it's her most famous work, but the more that I have learned about Willa Cather, the more I want to read one of her books. She just sounded like an amazing, fascinating woman, very strong, very independent woman. Not surprisingly, a lot of her main characters are strong, independent female characters. So again, sounds like exactly the type of book I would enjoy. I just have really not gotten around to her yet. She's also been on my TBR for a very long time. I think I'm gonna go with my Antonia. Again, because it's a little more famous, I am not exactly sure what it's about. I think it's about this immigrant family that lives in the Midwest, in Nebraska, and they're just trying to make a life for themselves on the prairie. So it kind of sounds like a more grown up version of Little House on the Prairie. Um, I think something bad happens to Antony. I think, you know, maybe a love interest gone wrong or something, but she's supposed to like rise to the occasion, just be like this awesome woman that is not afraid to get her hands dirty and work on the farm and raise her family. I'm really excited about this one and looking forward to it this summer. Another book I'm really excited to get around to this summer is The Hero and the Crown by Robin McKinley. I love Robin McKinley's books, especially Beauty, which is a Beauty and Beast retelling. And last year I read the sequel, prequel to this book, The Blue Sword. There is a little debate like which book are you supposed to start with first? Are you supposed to start with The Blue Sword or are you supposed to start with The Hero and the Crown? I started with the blue sword. I loved it. I thought it was just one of the most interesting fantasies I've ever read. I especially love that it was like set in the desert and that the main character was a girl. It also had a beautiful love story and just featured Robin McKinley's just amazing lyrical lush descriptions. This book is again the prequel to the blue sword, but it was published after the blue sword, if that makes sense. And this is the hero in the crown. It's about Aaron, who was like the first queen of Damar, and she was the first person to wield the blue sword. If this all sounds crazy and fantasy, it is. Um, but again, I think if you like Tolkien, if you like C.S. Lewis, if you like Juliet Marillier, I just read The Daughter of the Forest. Again, very similar writer to Robin McKinley. I can always use a little more fantasy in the summer and I cannot wait to read this one. And another author that just screams summertime to me is Mary Stewart. And this is the last book that I have to read by Mary Stewart and that is The Gabriel Hounds. I love her so much ever since I discovered her a couple years ago. If you're new to Mary Stewart, I'd probably start with her most famous book, Nine Coaches Waiting. That one is a lot of fun. It's kind of like a Jane Eyre retelling, but it's set in the 1950s, the 1960s. In fact, all of her books are kind of set in the 60s and they're very, very similar to old Hitchcock movies. So if you like movies like The Birds or North by Northwest or especially To Catch a Thief, I think you will really like Mary Stewart's writing because it feels very cinemagraphic. I'm a little surprised that they did not make more movies based on her books. Uh, they turned one of her books, The Moon Spinners, into a Disney movie. But again, I just really prefer the books. They usually feature very strong, independent, again, glamorous women. And then they usually are like some thriller. So the woman will be on vacation in some exotic place like Greece or Italy or France and she'll get caught up in some sort of like smuggler's ring or something like that. 
I think because I really love Nancy Drew as well, it feels like Mary Stewart is like a step up, like one step up from Nancy Drew. I love her writing so much and I've really been savoring all of her books over the last few years. This one sounds classic. Uh, it's set in Lebanon. Again, how exciting. It is about Christy Mansell and she is looking for her great Aunt Harriet, an eccentric English woman who lives in seclusion amid the decaying splendor of a palace in Lebanon. Cannot wait to get to this one. I know that I'm gonna love it. And the last book that I cannot wait to get to this summer is actually a part of a series. Um, if you are new to the series, I recommend the first one, When Hitler Stole Pink Rabbit by Judith Kerr. This book was on my favorites of 2023 video. I absolutely loved it. Um, I loved it so much that I went back and bought the other two books in the series, kind of like as a birthday present to myself. The second is Bombs on Aunt Dainty, and the third is A Small Person Far Away. The reason I love this series so much is because it is loosely based on Judith Kerr's real life. Uh, she was a Jewish German immigrant and her father was a very famous political writer in Germany at the time. And when the Nazis rose to power, because he was Jewish and he was anti-Nazi, he kind of was like one of the first people on their hit list. So the first book, When Hitler Stole Pink Rabbit, is about the father and the family fleeing Germany at the beginning of World War II. And the father takes them to Switzerland and then they go to France. And finally, they end up in England. And although these books are about very serious topics, they're very heartwarming and cozy reads at the same time. It really is about Anna's family and just this like Jewish immigrant family and like what that experience must have been like in World War II. And it's just all about like going to school in France and learning how to speak the language. I am currently reading the second book in the series, Bombs on Aunt Dainty. And honestly, I think I even love this second book more than the first one. This one, Anna is 16 years old and she's going to Secretarial College in London and it takes place during the Blitz. It's probably one of the best books that I've ever read about the Blitz or what the Blitz was like for an average person that had to live in London. And her family are refugees, of course, so they live in this like hotel with other refugees. And it's just about like the air drills every night and like going into the basement with their mattresses and just kind of trying to survive day after day in London. And they really cannot wait until it's bad weather so that the Germans will not be bombing the city. Also learn about some of the racism geared toward Jewish immigrants at the time. Even though she's Jewish, even though they're anti-Nazi, the British really frown upon Germans in England at that time, obviously. So her brother goes to Cambridge and they pull him out of Cambridge. He got a full ride to college. They take him and they put him in an internment camp. In, on the island of Man, and I never knew that. I never knew that German citizens were interred in England at the time. Um, so that's just kind of a little bit of history that they kind of gloss over nowadays. Also, Anna too, she graduates from secretarial school and she really wants to work for the home office. And she calls up and she goes on an interview and they're like, great, you can speak three languages, you'll make the perfect secretary. And then once they find out that she's German, they're like, sorry, we can't give you the job because you're German. Same thing with her brother. When he gets out of the internment camp, he wants to join the Air Force. They will not let him join up because he's German. I love this book so much because it's just, it teaches you a lot about history, but in a very cozy way, if that makes sense. It's very, very similar to Betsy and Tacey. I think if you like those books, you'll love these books like I do. And again, even though they're children's books, they are perfect for adults for some light summertime reading. Thank you everyone for joining me for my summer TBR. These are all of the classic books that I plan to read this summer. Again, I don't think that I'll get to half of them, but I just like having a nice list to choose from. And I'm very excited about a lot of these books, especially Cranford. I'm almost certain I'm gonna get to that one next. And a lot of these travel log books too, like The Towers of Trebizond. That one sounds like so much fun. Thank you so much for joining me and happy summer reading.